so there's a storm brewing outside. <laughs> It's from any of black if there's a storm brewing outside you'll probably hear the thunder as i'm reading and i uh poured myself some coffee and i got my copy of the scum villain self-saving system volume two baby and was like you know what tonight's the night we need to dive into the next chapter set <laughs> so excited yes we've got stuff to talk about we've got comments we have shenanigans from the feral fandom but we are on the penultimate set of chapters for volume two which is insanity i i heard someone say that, like oh i can't wait for you to be finished with um i think it was holy milk they were saying i can't wait for you to be finished with volume two or with with scumville and self-saving systems so you can know all the memes and all the things and i was like yeah i i am so excited to be done with the series to know all the secrets but i've never wanted time to go slower than with this series because it's dawning on me like when i was doing heaven officials blessing i was like oh god i've got eight volumes this will take forever i'm we're almost halfway done with the series and it's like ooh, ooh, this is going to take not very long <laughs> so um but yeah we're on the penultimate set of chapters crazy talk um uh, we're doing chapters 49 50 and 51 um, at this point, which is pages 227 to 263 in the book. So a nice little chunk. I've got some comments before we start. Um, and then next week will be the, the final set of chapters for volume two, <laughs> which is crazy, right? So we might as well, um, dive into these comments, shall we? Um, Yejing 98 talks about how, um, in comparison, and I think this is good to know, and there are some mildish spoilers for, uh, the main characters of Heaven Officials Blessing and Modao Zushi. So if you've not watched those series, just skip about 30 seconds ahead because this is going to be very quick. Um, but Hua Chong from Heaven Officials Blessing and Lam Wanji from Modao Zushi, uh, Yejing98 pointed out that they had time to process their grief. There was an amount of time that passed um, between them losing their other half of their couple and then reuniting with them. So they had time to process their grief and work through it and figure things out and clear up misunderstandings and gather information and intel. And then when they met up with their significant other, it was like, oh, we're all set to go. MXTX doesn't give us that luxury with this series. And that's end of those spoilers. Um, they they don't get that luxury. Lo Bing Hei, it falls down the abyss and then these things that we haven't had a big long hundred year span of time in between Lo Bing Hei and Shen Ching Zhu being separated. They're pretty much equal, like immediately three years later thrown back together after the abyss. And then all the stuff goes down. And then with Shen Ching Zhu, there's five years. Now, a couple things to point out. One, um, again, mild spoilers, skip the next 10 seconds. But unlike Modao Zushi and Heaven Official's Blessing, um, Shin Chingcho is not the one that dies. Like Wei Wushin dies and Shi Lian is uh, Shi Lian. Um, but Shin Chingcho doesn't die. He, he's the one that pushes Lo Binghe into the abyss and Lo Binghe doesn't die either. So it's just a bunch of misunderstandings. So there's a big difference there. But also it's the fact that the thing that's so crazy is that Shin Chingcho, you know, was out just walking around doing whatever and Lo Binghe was down in the abyss. And so there is there is some differences there that MXTX is doing compared to her other two series that I think are notable. But as we've come to find out, five years have passed since the death of Shin Ching Cho. <laughs> and in those five years, Lo Binghe has kind of turned a new leaf, at least I believe in terms of him realizing that he was wrong. And he shouldn't have felt that way towards Shin Ching Cho. And he probably wishes he could have another chance to talk to him. And eventually I think they're going to meet back up. And it's going to be crazy to see what happens there. But we'll just have to see. So, yeah. I thought that was really good to note. Um, and now, you know, that they're back. You know, Shin Ching Cho. The thing that it is... The thing that's so crazy about it is that Lo Binghe is offended by Shin Ching Cho because he thinks he's just a doppelganger. He thinks he's just a lookalike. And he's like, how dare this guy that looks like my beloved, kind of, is right here in front of me. And the thing he doesn't realize that Shin Ching Cho isn't telling him is that, hey, I am your beloved. Ha <laughs> ha, surprise. And it's going to be a big ordeal when it comes out. I just know it's going to be a big ordeal. Or maybe MXTX is going to surprise us and it will just be nothing at all. Who knows? Who knows? Um, my thing with that was, is would the bugs in Shin Ching Cho's blood 
somehow alert Lo Bing Hei that it was Shin Ching Cho? Can the bugs in his blood do that? I don't, I guess they can't. We haven't been privy to that. Um, Angry Panda, Angry is Panda points out that Shin Ching Cho does not want to be seen as emotionally vulnerable. Shin Ching Cho does not want to be seen as emotionally vulnerable. And so when there was that multiple choice that Shin Ching Cho had the option of with the system, choice A was the correct choice, but it would require Shin Ching Cho to open up emotionally and talk things out with Lo Bing Hei. And I liked Angry as Panda's comment that MXTX could be making a note that, you know, up until recently, it wasn't considered, at least in Western society, and I'm sure in Eastern society as well, socially acceptable for male characters or even men in real life to come out and be emotionally vulnerable. I know in the anime realm, there's been a big push in the last 10 years of having male protagonists that are the main characters be more emotionally vulnerable and be more opening up and being able to cry and express emotion and do all this. And there were some before 10 years ago, but it was there was a lot of like, oh, you be a man and tough it up and don't you cry, don't you show weakness. And now it's like, no, people are human regardless of your gender, if any. And it's okay to be vulnerable and show that emotion and open up about yourself, it's healthy. So. I feel MXTX is making a statement there that Shin Ching Cho not wanting to be emotionally vulnerable might be because he's read all these stallion novels and that's a stereotype that's kind of pervaded itself into society. And that happens. And so it's something I speak out about in other series where I'm like, people are like, oh, well, it's just in a story. And I'm like, yeah, but if it's a cultural mindset, it's reflective on a mindset that exists. So it's crazy. But I thought that was really good to mention. Um, Sorum X talked about how I like this comparison as well. At the beginning of the story, in the OG version, Lo Binghe was loved by women, but hated by men because they were jealous. Now, in the current story, Shin Ching Cho is loved by men and hated by women who are jealous. So it's just like they're, they're meeting each way. They're meeting halfway. How the tables have turned. And then uh, Sorum X also notes that Shin Ching Cho and Shang Qinghua, um, they're both either brilliant masterminds or incompetent idiots, <laughs> depending on what day it is and what the scenario is. Um, and then Anime Annie, Anime Annie had a couple comments I wanted to talk about. Um, the system multi-choice thing, like we talked about with Angry as Panda's comment, um, I like that Shin Ching Show treated it like it was a dating simulator, <laughs> choosing the right one. Um, but they also noted that, um, and I'm gonna read this verbatim because I thought it was really good, that Shin Ching Cho, for me, Shin Ching Cho feeling unable to choose option A, even though that's how he feels, could be Mo, could be MXTX making a social commentary, and this ties into Angry as Panda, on how society is not encouraging the young men to talk about their feelings towards as it is towards women. The discourse is changing slowly, but there is still stigma attached in certain parts of the world more than others to uh, men being openly honest about their feelings. And yeah, I definitely think women are encouraged to be more emotionally available and men are definitely not. And I just finished watching this series called Baby Reindeer on Netflix. Um, it is not for everybody. Uh, there's a lot of triggers in that series. Um, but I actually wanted to talk about it in another series that I was reacting to in more detail. Um, in that series, Baby Reindeer, the main character, this is going to be kind of spoilery. So again, skip 30 seconds ahead if you don't want baby reindeer spoilers. Um, but he is a victim, the main character, he is a victim of sexual assault. And I, what I loved about that series was that it, one, did not shy away from how horrible it is and the emotions of that experience. And it was something very visceral and you could connect with that character instantly. Um, two, the character is flawed. He is very flawed has a lot of flaws. And there are times where you're looking at him like, what are you doing? How'd you get into this scenario? But you understand where he's coming from and you kind of get it even if you're like, what the heck? But the thing I liked most about it was his character opens up as the series goes and he has a lot of moments where he's emotionally vulnerable to people around him about his experiences. And for this male character to be emotionally vulnerable and to cry and to weep and, and just shed all that emotion and bare his soul, it was really kind of refreshing. And it wasn't something I'd seen in a lot of other modern 
shows, at least not to the, the quality of extent that it was. So if this is such a weird caveat, I would say if you are okay with SA with some creepy shit and a message that is very complex and very triggering, but in a satisfying way, I can't describe it any other way, then I'd recommend Baby Reindeer. Um, but if you're not into that shit, then I would not, because it's very disturbing um, and very real. I was sitting there like, I binged it last night. I like, I couldn't go to sleep. And I sat for like six hours watching it and was just like, I binged the whole thing in like six hours. And I was like, oh my God, what did I watch? <laughs> I felt like Clockwork Orange, but yeah. So anyway, um, the other comments I have are about the feral fandom. Thank you all for the comments. Um, I did have these two images. They've been my favorite from this last week. Um, this one from Pancake is showing Shin Ching Cho. And it's like, please admit that Lo Bing Hei means a lot to you or draw 25 cards. <laughs> and then it's like, Shizun, I wrote that card. <laughs> and Shizun's like, I'd rather draw all the cards than admit that you mean a lot to me. And I'm like, damn it, Shin Ching Cho, son of a bitch. <laughs> The other card, the other feral fandom comment was um, <laughs> the anime Annie in the Discord had talked about um, MXTX um, having this fog of misunderstanding and torturing us more at this point in the story in comparison to how she tortured us at this point. This was back during the Lo Bing Hei Shin Ching Cho like water prison arc. And um, my comment back to that was the fact that they don't acknowledge the fog of a misunderstanding. It's not mentioned. They don't, they barely, you, you would forget it's there. They don't acknowledge the fog of misunderstanding system. You forget about it. You question why there's a misunderstanding. Then you remember the fog of misunderstanding. And then you question why MXTX doesn't give us that point of view. And then MXTX flips us off and then we repeat. <laughs> That's basically been the story. And I'm like, son of a bitch, MXTX. Like, she's just like, na 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 na. She's not going to give us anything. I'm like, how dare you? So yeah, that's where we're at. But chapters 49 through 51, I'm super excited. As you can tell, I hope you all are as well. So poet and I didn't even know it. Let's get on with this. We last left off the little palace mistress. Uh, Shin Ching Cho has basically gone into the, the lion's den, <laughs> not the adult store. But the lion's mouth, there's an adult store chain in the U.S. called the Lion's Den in the Midwest. That's all I'll say. But he's basically in the mouth of the lion. He is with the Huan Hua Palace. And nobody knows it's Shin Ching Cho yet. He's just, I, I hope we find out if Gong Yi Zhao is actually dead. I really am going to be sad if he's actually dead. But I'm hoping he's still alive somehow and just like in a prison or something. I'd be fine with that. I'd be good with that. But I don't know. But. Uh, so Little Palace Mistress is not happy. Neither is uh, Chu Wan Yu um, because Lo Bing Hei is just being a grumpy beast because his lover is supposedly dead. So, but let's start chapters 49 through 51 and just see what happens to Shin Ching Cho. Maybe he'll get out of this little squabble in one piece. <laughs> We're going to do that here in three, two, one. Chapter 49. Shin Ching Cho had always maintained a respectful distance when it came to the fights between female characters, but having observed this, he felt like the gap between his expectations and reality was too great to ignore. He hurried out after them, continuing to observe. Oh, I'm sorry I neglected my duties, Chin Wan Yu said while holding back tears. I didn't stop the little palace mistress. Sha Hualing swiftly cut her off. It was entirely your fault. I've heard that saving face is especially important to the human realm women. But even though you failed to seduce the Lord many times, you shamelessly refused to leave. So that's all your face amounts to. Moreover, not leaving is one thing, but you can't even keep a proper eye on a single person. You're her Shiji, so her cultivation is inferior to yours. Yet you didn't stop her? And you even let her throw a tantrum before the Lord? Who are you humiliating yourself and acting pitiful for? Listening to Sha Hualing point out her inadequacies to her face, Chen Wan Yu wanted to die of shame and resentment. Even in the original work, Sha Hualing had deeply hated Chen Wan Yu and always found fault with her. Okay. It seemed that though they hadn't entered the harem together this time, their relationship hadn't improved in the slightest. Shua, Sha Hualing then turned her head and swapped out her entire expression. She spoke to the little palace mistress while full of smiles. 
these past few years, the little palace mistress has lived a life of luxury, just like she did before. Other than the occasional house arrest, you've suffered no real mistreatment, right? So why are you so aggrieved? Who the hell are you? The little palace mistress asked viciously. How dare you? An indecent vixen seductress from heavens knows where. Speak like that to me in Juan Hua Palace. How is the way he treats me any different from a kept pig? Sha Huoling pouted. Well, then why does the little palace mistress tell me? What else can she do other than eat and sleep like the animal she brought up? Chin Wan Yu sobbed. Oh, little palace, little palace mistress, let's go. Everything has long since changed. On what grounds can you make me leave? The little palace mistress said hysterically. This is my Huan Hua palace. Mine. Get out of my way. Traitors, the lot of you. The scene fell into a complete chaos with people sent flying every which way. Shin Ching had discovered the most shocking truth. He carefully counted on his fingers. Sha Hualing was made not a wife, but a subordinate toils to death on overtime and her pay and benefits are nothing to write home about from her boss's attitude she doesn't look like he wants an office romance either x liu mingyan didn't even exchange the sword tassel love token x oh ning ying ying after puberty stopped demonstrating the fanatical love from her naive youth towards the male lead it seems her lovesick brain's been cured x the little palace mistress, bitter locked up woman. She herself said that Lo Binghei treats her like a kept pig. X. Chin Wan Yu, bitter locked up woman, the sequel. Failed at offering herself countless times. Moonlights as the little palace mistress's nanny. X. A uh, Chiu Hai Tang. After dragging Shin Ching Cho down, she's supposed to be happily going down to Cuck Town with Lo Binghei. Cuck Town. Why is she still wandering about like a vagrant? Checks. The three Taoist nuns, a second in the spotlight, hello and goodbye. Check, check, check. Looking down the list, Lo Bingye had really ended up in an awful state. As the hale and hearty male lead of a stallion novel, are you doing okay or not? The perfectly good harem had been broken down to the point that it was coughing up smoke. If this were a novel and the plot were had unfolded to this point without the protagonist collecting a single wife, what satisfaction points were there to be had? Don't ask those questions, Shin Ching Cho. You're going to get answers. Shin Ching Cho promptly called up the system to check the various category point values. Unexpectedly, he discovered that beneath the B points, the protagonist satisfaction points had not only hadn't decreased, they'd actually risen to over 900. Because many of the points had been added while the system was offline and hibernating, he hadn't received the notifications. Shin Ching Cho prodded open the many new windows, providing detailed calculations that he unknowingly received. Lined up within them were a bunch of new records. Ning Ying Ying subverted the trope of a female character being a brainless martyr for love. B points plus 100. Ming Fan subverted the trope of a side character being an illogical idiot. B points plus 50. Liu Mingyan subverted the trope of a female character being a nonsensical martyr for love. B points plus 150. The ubiquitous love martyr female characters and idiot cannon fodder. These two points together constituted the classic landmine elements of stallion novels. Now the female characters weren't relationship-based martyrs for the male lead, and the side characters' EQs and IQs had also written, risen. So naturally, the B points had risen too. This, Shin Ching Cho understood. But while Lo Binghe hadn't bedded a single girl, the system hadn't deducted any satisfaction points. That part was unscientific. Oh my god. C come on, Sherlock, you can do it. Could it be that currently, the male lead's satisfaction points were no longer bound to the male lead himself? Or to say it another way, what determined the male lead's satisfaction no longer lay in such pleasures? Could it be? Shin Ching Cho couldn't resist the urge to raise his eyes and take in Lo Bing Hei's dismal expression. He suddenly felt that he couldn't stare straight at him anymore. It was criminal. Criminal! Could it be that he'd raised an otherwise totally fine stallion novel male lead? To be asexual? Oh my god! Well, no, 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 that's you, Shin Ching Cho! Not quite! Try again! Shin Ching Cho closed the windows, his feelings complicated. Then he realized that something about his location didn't seem quite right. 
Just now he'd definitely been in the Huan Hua Palace, minding his own business. So how had he ended up walking into a forested grove without noticing? And regardless of how he studied it, it was a strikingly familiar looking bamboo forest. Oh no! The bamboo forest rustled as a gentle breeze blew through it. Shin Ching Shou didn't even need to guess the identity of the location. Even if he'd been shown only a corner of this place, he'd know where it was. Sangjong Mountain, Qi Jing Peak. How could he not be familiar with the place where he'd thus far holed up for the longest period of time in his life? Your current location, the land of Lo Binghe's dream realm. How do we get here? When Lo Binghe's consciousness was unstable and its fluctuations were especially large, outsiders were often affected, sucked into a dream realm that was as vast as a deep sea vortex. Or you could say they'd become collateral damage for Lo Binghe's incomparably huge black hole of an imagination. For a specific example, please see the beginning of the Mang Mo instance from way back when. I like that we had to, I like that they had to go reference back to volume one. What? Xin Ching Cho had run through the Mang Mo scenario with Lo Binghe at the time. This was operating on the same principle as strangers the first time, but familiar the second. It was similar to how after connecting to a Wi-Fi network once, the second time you would connect automatically without needing to enter the password. Oh, nice! Shin Ching Cho quich, quickly touched his own face and found no beard. Within the dream realm, he'd returned to his original appearance, leaving him with absolutely no sense of security. Just as he was thinking of finding a place to hide and wait for Lo Binghe to awaken by himself, some disciples walked towards him in twos and threes, and Shin Ching Cho jerked to a halt, wholly forgetting to conceal himself. The problem was that although the expressions on these coming and going disciples were slightly wooden, every single one had noses and eyes, their facial features complete. Shin Ching Cho could even name quite a few. Not even Meng Mo was able to simultaneously support a vast barrier while guaranteeing the facial features of the life forms within. Yet Lo Binghe could already do it, and to such a great level of detail. Though Shin Ching Cho had long known that Lo Binghe's OP-ness could eclipse the heavens, he still couldn't help but let out a sigh. <sighs> Amazing. After exiting the little bamboo forest, he came upon Qi Jing's bamboo house. Between the scattered stalks of bamboo, some tall and some short, spring water flowed in a rush, tinkling rhythmically and reflecting the sunlight in a rainbow of colors. Chin Ching Cho was worried that Lo Binghe was inside the house and halted his steps. Having strolled this bamboo forest countless times while idling about, he easily found a place to hide and came to a stop within the shadows. Suddenly, there came the sound of footsteps on fallen leaves, and from within the overlapping verdant bamboo out walked a youth in white, fifteen or sixteen years of age. This youth's skin was fair, and he appeared to have run all the way here. A layer of sweat covered his forehead while his cheeks were rosy, which made for an incredibly adorable sight. The lines on his eyes and brows were precise without being sharp, and they radiated a sense of his youthful inexperience. Shin Ching Cho mourned despite himself. It had been a long time since he'd seen the youthful Lo Binghe, that small, refreshing sun. While cultivating on Qi Jing Peak, Lo Binghe Lai had liked to wear white, but after his rebellious phase began, the devil incarnate Lo Binghe had come to wear only black, pretty much the polar opposite of before. This youthful tenderness was even more a memory and it was no longer in evidence at all. Lo Binghe strode forward, calling out in high spirits, Oh, Shizun! Shin Ching Cho was hidden in the shadows, so naturally this call wasn't for him. He turned his gaze, and as expected, he saw a form in teal robes standing at the end, far end of the cobblestone path. The Shin Ching Cho, forged from memories in the dream realm, stood in the midst of a stretch of verdant, flourishing bamboo. His figure was slender, like unto a t thin stalk of bamboo himself, and his expression was unperturbed, radiating the cool aura of an immortal, while his poise was veritably somewhat otherworldly. As a bystander, the current Shin Ching Cho judged him from head to toe and still had to applaud. To be able to fake it to this level, he was really too superb. Oh my god, of course Lo Binghe knows exactly what he looks like. Also, that Lo Binghe could have perfectly restore all these tiny details. As expected, the man who would personally succeed Meng Mo. Oh my god, Jin Ching Cho. I doubt anybody else is as highly detailed as you in this dream. Then Shin Ching Cho, in the midst of the bamboo, appeared to have been lost in thought. 
He cocked his head and asked, finish running? Lo Binghe nodded, 10 laps, all finished. Chin Ching Cho finally remembered what slice of memory this was. The 10 laps that Lo Binghe spoke of referred to 10 laps around the fence encircling Chi Jing Peak. Chin Ching Cho had personally assigned him this task. He hadn't done it because he had a twisted hobby of inflicting corporal punishment upon the great male lead, but because he just couldn't endure it any longer. After taking over Lo Bing He's education, he'd mulled it over and decided that since he was to be a role model and worthy teacher, he ought to at least do some proper teaching. This way, after they fell out in the future, he would be able to utter the phrase, within a master-disciple relationship lies the grace of knowledge passed down, without reddening from shame before the words left his mouth. In his course curriculum, the first thing was to correct the absolute mess that was Lo Bing He's footwork and form. As for the results, he'd mentioned it a while back. The most significant outcome was that Lo Binghe had repeatedly fallen into his arms for half a month. Once more, said Shen Ching Cho, if you get it wrong again this time, it won't be only 10 laps. Lo Binghe obediently performed the maneuver once more. While he certainly didn't fall into Shen Ching Cho's arms this time, instead his legs buckled and he ended up directly embracing Shen Ching Cho's waist. Shen Ching Cho was silent. Shizun, this disciple is useless, Lo Binghe said bashfully. Oh, after ten laps, my legs have no strength. Oh no, this is a dream. Is Shin Ching Cho about to get a show of things that he should not be seeing? <laughs> oh no! Oh. Shin Ching Cho sighed. This disciple knows, Lo Binghe said, fully aware. Twenty laps. What laps? Go back and rest. Shin Ching Cho had no interest in abusing children. At that time, he'd truly given up. Let him do whatever he wants. No more teaching. There's no sense of accomplishment whatsoever. I'm throwing out the textbooks. Lo Binghe failed to recognize that he'd been declared a hopeless case. Well, thank you, Shizun, he said in high spirits. This disciple will absolutely make up the 20 laps tomorrow. Is there anything Shizun would like to eat tonight? To the side, Shin Ching Cho rubbed his forehead. Lo Binghe in those days had genuinely been naive and sweet to an exceptional degree. Enduring labor, resentment, beatings, and verbal abuse, being stepped on, kicked, made to cook. <clears throat> of course, Shin Ching Cho hadn't done most of those things. After watching this artificial master disciple pair, one tall and one short, walk off while conversing, Shin Ching Cho came out of his hiding place and lapsed into bewilderment. Within the dream realm barrier Lo Bing had constructed for himself, he would naturally choose to relive his most wonderful memories. If any memories of Qi Jing Peak could occupy such a niche, they should have been the ones related to Ning Ying. So why had this one played out? Please figure out, Shen Jing Cho. Please figure out. The dream realm precisely reflected the truth of a person's heart. It would neither lie nor deceive. Within Shen Jing Cho welled up a thought he'd never had before. This thought was admittedly a bit shameless, but probably, maybe... Possibly, those memories of this master-disciple relationship occupied a better place in Lo Binghe's heart than Shin Ching Cho had thought. At the very least, it could be said that he'd given Lo Binghe a couple of moments that were decent enough to look back on, so perhaps the entire thing hadn't been completely unbearable. However, was Lo Binghe a bit of a masochist? Shin Ching Cho didn't want to badmouth him, but normally a memory about being punished with 10 or 20 laps could never have anything to do with the world with the word wonderful, right? Suddenly, a trace of chilly air unfurled over Shin Ching Cho's nape, as if a gaze, both hot and cold, was crawling upward along his back. He unconsciously looked behind him. Lo Binghe, clothed in black, was leaning against a stalk of bamboo and staring straight at him. The two of them stared at each other without speaking. In the flesh. In the flesh! Shin Ching Cho's initial reflex wasn't to make a break for it, but to remain in place unmoving and, he, and adjust his expression to be as natural as possible. This wasn't because he was scared stiff with legs too weak to run, more that he'd long since psychologically prepared himself to encounter this kind of scenario. Running couldn't solve the problem at all. This barrier was Lo Bing Hei's home field, so he could run as fast as he could and it'd still be pointless. That gaze, being simultaneously hot and cold, hadn't been his imagination. Nor was it a mistaken de description. Lo Binghe's expression really did seem like both ice and fire. A deep chill within as well as a burning heat. 
the two temperatures combined bizarrely and condensed within his eyes, which were locked securely on Shin Qingqiu's form. Shin Qingqiu braced himself, letting their eyes meet. After a long while, Lo Binghe sighed first. He murmured, being able to dream is also a wonderful thing. When Shin Qingqiu heard this, he realized he'd managed to get away with his risky maneuver. By summoning his courage, he'd actually won the gamble. At this moment, Lo Binghe's absent-mindedness had enabled Shin Qingqiu to be taken in as a dream realm creation. Shin Qingqiu studied Lo Binghe leaning against the bamboo, stare fixed on himself. He thought of Lo Binghe's numb appearance on the throne earlier that day all alone. When he compared that to the scene in the original work of Lo Binghe, surrounded by splendid luxuries, ev his every call answered by hundreds, Shin Qingqiu's heart throbbed a bit though he tried to stop it. Lo Binghe didn't have a single wife by his side to heal his injuries, to pamper and ask after him. How could his heart not throb? A perfectly fine stallion novel male lead had fallen to such a state. What man could bear to look? Shizun, won't you speak with me a little, Lo Binghe asked. At this moment, Shin Ching Zhou's heart was full of sympathy for Lo Binghe, all right, he said amicably. What do you want to talk about? When he spoke, Lo Binghe unexpectedly went rigid, then straightened at once and left the bamboo stalk. The expression on his face, one of slight disbelief. Oh no, Shin Xingqiu thought. Was something amiss in the reaction I came up with? But since he'd already started acting, he had to act until the end. He absolutely couldn't give up halfway. Embarrassment was a small thing. Blowing his cover was not. Shin Xingqiu smiled. Didn't you ask this master to speak with you? Oh, Shin Qingzhou, you don't know what you're doing! He used the tone he'd often deployed in the past when interacting with Lo Binghe. The corner of Lo Binghe's mouth twitched, and he unhurriedly walked towards him. Oh my gosh! Shin Qingzhou kept his expression steady while casually and gently opening and closing the folding fan in his hand, using the small movements to alleviate his anxiety. Lo Binghe was silent for a moment. In the past, Shizun wouldn't even glance my way and would walk off without paying me heed. Forget about talking to me. Perhaps my imagination today is a little too indulgent. Shin Ching Zhou's heart stirred. Though he, could, though he felt something was still off, these words really did sound a tad pitiful. Could it be that within Lo Bing He's mind, Shin Ching Cho always treated him with indifference and was lofty and unfeeling? Lo, Lo Binghe really did have slight masochistic tendencies, huh? As Shin Qingxiu thought this, in his distraction, his hand unconsciously began to move, and in accordance with the natural order, he patted the top of Lo Binghe's head. He'd performed this action countless times. The saying went that it was forbidden to touch men's heads and women's waists, but the more something was forbidden, the more he felt the urge to do it. Oh my god! Oh! Shin Xing Shou especially loved patting people's heads. Unfortunately, as a grown adult, he couldn't often indulge this sort of rude impulse, and moreover, no one would let him touch them no matter however he wanted. Luckily, the Lo Binghe of the past hadn't minded when, Xing Shou, when Shin Ching Shou placed his hand on his head. So Shin Ching Shou had aimlessly patted him whenever, until it eventually became a habit, and now he was doing it again. Oh no, the fog is clearing! He had barely patted Lo Binghe two or three times when he was caught off guard. Lo Binghe lifted his own arm, his right hand grasping Shin Ching Cho's left wrist. Shin Ching Cho's expression it stiffened as he thought, well, isn't this a bit too close? Straight after, his right wrist had been firmly captured as well. Lifting his head in shock, Shin Ching Cho felt his vision blur. Something like a feather delicately brushed his cheek. From on top of his lips came a foreign sensation, soft and slightly cool. In this way, his eyes opened wide, and he, get, and he met gazes with Lo Binghe's pair of pitch-black irises. His throat bobbed once with difficulty. He wanted to speak, but he couldn't open his mouth, because someone was biting down on his lips. Lo Binghe shut his eyes, 
his jet black eyelashes casting curved shadows on his cheeks. It made him look incredibly endearing, but his hands and mouth were a totally different story. He angrily held Shin Ching Cho's lips between his teeth, chomping, the action carrying a hint of childish resentfulness. His right hand released Shin Ching Cho's frozen limb and moved to the center of his waist instead, pressing Shin Ching Cho into his arms. Even though their builds were similar, he could still entirely enfold Shin Ching Cho with this simple one armed embrace. Shin Ching Cho's worldview repeatedly collapsed and reformed. <laughs> collapsed and reformed, cycling infinitely at the speed of light. What broke through his breakdown was a system notification accompanied by celebratory background music. Dun 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 dun! dun. Satisfaction points 500. Congratulations! 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 Important things must be said three times. What the fuck? <laughs> Shin Ching Shin Cho snapped in his head! He finally understood why. Even though Lo Bing Hei hadn't slept with a single girl, even though neither hide nor hair could be seen of his innumerable harem of beauties, his satisfaction points hadn't fallen because he'd used Shin Ching Show to make up for the deficit. Ah! Ah! Yeah! Now we getting somewhere! Chapter 50! The Shin Ching Show who'd suddenly understood the truth was half horrified and half enraged. He raised his foot and kicked. Lo Binghe neither ducked nor sidestepped and took the kick head on, but he didn't retreat a single step. He even continued to hold Shin Ching Cho without letting go. Am I not even allowed to dream? He asked, looking both angry and wounded. Hurry and wake up. Even though this is a dream, you didn't dream up this big shot. He couldn't slap Lo Binghe awake, but he couldn't let him continue this foolishness either. Oh, this was really, this was the real being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Ha ha! Shin Ching Cho hadn't figured out what to yell in order to calm himself down when his back was slammed into a strand of bamboo without warning, and he was pressed into it. Lo Bing Hei lowered his head and descended once more. It wasn't Shin Ching Cho's first time being kissed, but it was his first time feeling the threat of someone going crazy and biting off his lips. Between disordered breaths, Lo Binghe whispered, Shizun, I was wrong. Shin Ching Shou managed to free one of his hands and pushed against Lo Binghe's chest. He really didn't want to do this kind of woman from a good family resisting a ruffian pose, but you fucker, does this look like you knowing that you're in, does this look like you knowing that you're in the wrong? Shin Ching Shou was the one who had been in the wrong, really wrong, completely wrong. Wind from an empty cave. Yeah, right. There was a scientific basis to all that Jiangju gossip. Every single gossiper must have fallen, it must have been a fallen angel in their previous life. Hence their ability to see past the surface to the reality beneath. Shin Ching Cho hadn't raised the male lead to be an asexual. And it wasn't an issue of whether or not Lo Binghe was a masochist. The reality was much more terrifying. He'd raised the male lead to be gay. Collected a single wife. No wonder his harem was in shambles. Women can no longer attract his interest. And they were no longer linked to his satisfaction points. What the actual fuck? Shin Ching Shou absolutely refused to submit. Tenaciously resisting and struggling with all his might. He was just considering which option would result in the worst conclusion. Self-detonating again, no, or kicking Lo Binghe's crucial bits. When Lo Binghe released him without warning. He looked at the sky above them with its swirling vortex of clouds, and his expression abruptly darkened. In an instant, the scenery and people before Shin Ching Cho's eyes crumbled and dissipated, the illusion shattering into a thousand pieces, and at the same time, on the roof of Huan Hua Palace's main hall, Shin Ching Cho sprang to his feet. Now this was the real world! Shin Ching Cho took in a series of violent breaths and managed to settle his mind. Suddenly he realized that every area beneath the main palace had been lit and the alarm bells were ringing together in mass. He poked his head over the edge, his clothes flapping ceaselessly in the night wind, and looked down from above. Countless lights were converging on the palace. Those were the disciples of Huanhua Palace's various domains, swarming here from all directions. Stand guard! This is an order to all domains! Stand guard! Another breach someone cursed. How many times has he broken in by now? Have we managed to hold him off even once? Shin Ching Cho rejoiced, 
An invasion was ideal. It would let him escape in the chaos. Who cared about the heavenly demon blood or whatever? His integrity was more important. Leave first and worry later. Goodbye! But in the end, he hadn't flown two steps before he heard someone say. He went in the direction of Huanhua Palace Pavilion. Form up and stop Liu Chinge. Chin Ching Cho's feet slipped out from under him, and he immediately turned around and ran back. Damn it. Liu Chinge just had to come now. Chin Ching Cho couldn't just throw him a wholly broken down and presently raging Lo Bing Hei, right? Huanhua pa Huan Pavilion was where successive generations of palace masters had lived and cultivated, and it wasn't too far. Within a couple of steps, Chin Ching Cho leapt off the roof, mingling with the main unit and hurrying over. They had yet to enter Huan Hua Pavilion when wave after wave of frigid, threatening wind assaulted them head on. From within the structure, there came an enraged shout full of murderous intent, GET OUT! When they'd heard the alarm bells, some ignorant disciples had burst in and several dozen people were in front were sent flying by an enormously powerful wave of chi. Chin Ching Cho was in the wave after, so he managed to dodge this blow in time. Picking out a good position, he took advantage of the chaos and slipped inside. A freezing chill hit him in the moment he entered, eliciting a wave of goosebumps. It was as if the entirety of Huan Hua Pavilion had become an enormous ice cave. A single step inside was like entering a land of frost and snow. Chill wind flooded Chin Ching Cho's robes and sleeves, and the cold sweat on his back and forehead rapidly froze to a thin layer of ice. One could imagine exactly how inhospitable the interior had to be. Not only was the temperature abnormally low, the doors were all sealed shut, the windows airtight, it was both freezing and dark. If it hadn't been for the intruder, that is, the Sangjong Mountains Director of Demolitions Liu Chinge, forcefully blowing open a huge hole in the wall, the place would have been like a coffin made of ice. Oh! The top of the sitting platform at the center of the pavilion was half shrouded by curtains, and several black and white outer robes were messily piled beside it. Lo Binghe was only wearing an inner robe, and he looked like he'd just gotten up from bed. His black hair was disheveled, and his clothes were in disarray, the neckline gaping and crooked. His face was abnormally pale, yet his lips had color. While his eyes flashed with the cold light, the aura sinister and menacing, it seemed he was prepared to fight his claws and fangs bared. Liu Chinge faced him from seven steps away, the bones protruding on his sword-holding hand, his entire face ashen. He stared at Lo Binghei, who calmly sat next to the platform and enunciated each word. You bastard. So was Lo Binghei, um, was he... Um, in the mood, is 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 was he um having a a, a dream of substance and did it was he doing it next to Shin Ching Cho's corpse? Surely not. Chapter eleven, part eleven, corpse, <laughs> or maybe he was. Okay, we're not to chapter fifty one yet though. A violent surge of spiritual light and killing intent burst from Cheng Luan. Shin Ching Cho's guard was up as he glanced back and forth between the two, and then suddenly he looked in the direction in which Liu Chinge's sword was pointed. From his brain, there came the sound of the last surviving shred of his worldview finally shattered. Lo Binghei's right hand was on Jin Mo, which never left his side. The snow white blade had already almost halfway out of its sheet, sheath, yet his left arm was, in fact, holding a person. Though Shin Ching Cho called it a person, it was more correct to say a body. It was completely lifeless, its head lolling and limbs slack, yet also completely pliable. It wore, it too wore a set of flimsy inner robes, the neckline having slipped past its shoulder, exposing half of a paper white back. What have you done? said Liu Chinge. Liu Chinge would never forget the scene he had witnessed just seconds before. After Chang Luan had torn open an entrance, he found a room completely empty other than the overlapping silhouettes among the curtains. Liu Chinge knew that Lo Binghei definitely had to be in the pavilion, but he never could have imagined that he wasn't the only one within. Lo Binghei raised his eyebrows, tugging the limp body in his left arm further into his embrace. You tell me, what have I done? Xin Qingqiu was thoroughly speechless. 
two people, or should you say one person alive and one person dead, rolling off of something similar to a bed together in clothes that barely covered up anything. It didn't look like something family friendly any way you spun it. Oh my God, there's some, oh my God, there's some necrophilia going on in this. What? Without a single word from Liu Chinge, Ch Chang Luan shot forward. Jin Mo had yet to be drawn all the way, so using only the sheath, Lo Binghei blocked Cheng Luan's point. The energy from Cheng Luan's sword glare was overwhelming. Shifting sideways slightly, Lo Binghei blocked the bitingly cold energy attacks, keeping the body in his arms safe behind him as his expression grew angry. Liu Chinge too had realized that if he deployed Cheng Luan within such a cramped chamber, a bit of carelessness might lead to his razor-sharp sword energy damaging that body. He instantly returned his sword to its sheath and began pitting his spiritual energy against Lo Binghei's. As they tumbled around, locked in combat, the loose clothes on that body slipped completely down to its waist, and Lo Binghei's palm pressed flush against that fair skin. Beast, no matter what, he's still your Shizun, Liu Chinge said with bloodshot eyes. You think I'd do this with an outsider? Lo Binghei, oh. <laughs> you think I'd do this with an outsider? Lo Binghei asked calmly. The Huanhua Palace disciples, who'd formed several circles around them, were all dumbstruck. Lo Binghei paid them no attention, his entire focus on dealing with Liu Chinge. Spiritual energy roiled like boiling water in the air around them, shooting in all directions. As they clashed, their expressions worsened, each more frightening than the last. No one dared to step inside Huanhua Pavilion for fear of being caught in the crossfire. Xin Qing, however, wasn't afraid of the crossfire. He was simply merely unable to look at it straight on. This is too hardcore. This is way too fucking hardcore. Even if his imagination had been as vast as the moon was covered with craters, he had still never imagined that one day he would become a character in this kind of hardcore kink play. The thing Lo Binghei was holding in his arms, that was indeed dead, right? He absolutely wasn't mistaken because that was his corpse, okay? This had already surpassed the level of fridge horror. Even before he thought about it carefully, it was already beyond horrifying. Even though he couldn't force himself to look directly, he hadn't forgotten his reason for coming back. Xin Qingzhou flashed behind Liu Qingge. The latter went on guard, believing this to be an ambush, and let out a dark laugh, preparing to send his assailant flying with spiritual chi. However, instead, a hand pressed against Liu Qingge's back, and a stream of steady, gentle, yet powerful spiritual energy flooded into his meridians. Once Liu Qingge received this aid, he could somewhat push back Lo Binghei. Liu Qingge dared not to be careless, but he turned his head slightly. Out of the corner of his eye, he could only make out the muddled visage of the person behind him. As if there was something covering their face, who's there? Liu Qingge asked quietly. Xin Qingzhou didn't answer, and instead sent more force through his hand. The two peerlessly powerful streams of spiritual energy merged into one. Though Lo Binghei could block it perfectly, this blast of offensive spiritual energy would travel down his body and into the corpse in his arms. He could just dissipate the energy, but the dead could not. If he didn't let it go, the shock would probably cause the body's facial appearances to rupture. Lo Binghei was unwilling to harm the corpse, so he could only release it. The body was shortly tossed away by the boiling spiritual field flying outward. After letting go, Lo Binghei's gaze remained firmly fixed on that body, his expression both helpless and reluctant. Xin Qingzhou suddenly found that expression of his unbearable. Using this method to force him to let go, it somehow felt like bullying? Several disciples, several disciples lacked sense and moved to take action. Don't touch him, Lo Binghei yelled. Even from a distance, a wave of his sleeve filled that direction with screams. Xin Qingzhou withdrew the spiritual energy he'd been applying to Leo Chingay's back. With a tap of his foot, he launched himself forward, catching the body within his arms. The sensation of holding your own corpse definitely wasn't just an ordinary level of incredible. <laughs> Xin Qingzhou gave it a couple of cursory glances. His old, his old body's complexion was actually still decidedly, rosedly, decidedly rosy, its four limbs pliant. Other than the tightly closed eyes and lack of breath, it was no different from a living person in a deep sleep. After self-detonation, one's spiritual energy was entirely dispersed. No cultivation remained within to prevent the corpse's decay. On top of that, more than five years had passed since his death, so just preserving the body with ice wouldn't have yielded this level of success. The body didn't smell of herbs, so it probably hadn't been treated with chemicals either. 
It was unclear what method Lo Binghe had used. Probably from the mausoleum. Shin Chincho dodged a spiritual blast strong enough to split stone and looked up. Lo Binghe was currently staring dead at him, his expression ferocious. Only now did Shin Chincho realize that his body's clothes had already slipped all the way down its torso and he was holding his naked flesh. Given how he had been touching and gazing at it, no matter how you looked, it was, it was both an incredibly disturbing and rather provocative sight. He hurriedly pulled up the corpse's clothes, then sent his hot potato towards Liu Qingxingge. Catch! Lo Binghe wanted to seize it, but he was intercepted by Liu Qing by Shin Qingcho. Originally, Shin Qingcho had been worried that Lo Binghe would activate the heavenly demon blood mites, but whether murderous intent had gone to his head or his panic had sent him into a tizzy, he surprisingly didn't think to activate the trump card. Liu Qingge caught the body with one arm and called forth Chang Lan with his free hand easily being back the circle of attacking Huanhua Palace disciples. Due to being tossed back and forth between them, the corpse's top had finally ripped completely. When Liu Chinge caught it, he felt an expanse of smooth skin beneath his palm, both fine and cool, and the area where his hand touched seemed to skitter with a slight electric current. Liu Chinge's entire body froze. Finding no appropriate place he could hold the body, he almost sent it back once more. Luckily, he managed to resist this impulse in the end and took off his outer robe, the white cloth spreading like wings, and bundled up the body in his arms. Cheng Lan flew back and steadily hovered before his feet. Lo Binghei's eyes had turned far, fully scarlet. The entire Huanhua Pavilion was like a tightly sealed box, and inside the box a bomb had been placed. When the bomb exploded, the walls collapsed with a loud rumble. Falling alongside the flying sand and hurling stones, aside from people, people, and more people, were two objects that hit the ground with a metallic clang. When Xin Qingqiu focused and looked, he saw they were actually two swords, Zhang Yang and Zhu Ya. These two swords had originally shared the same fate and broken into numerous sections of blade shards. It was unclear how they'd been repaired, but they'd been tied together and placed in Huanhua Pavilion. Only with the pavilion's collapse did they once again see the sun in the sky. Seeing these two swords once more left an indescribable feeling in Shin Qingqiu's heart. He looked towards Lo Binghei, whose clothes had been disheveled from the start. After that wave of explosions, his clear-cut collarbones and chest lay entirely exposed. Near where his heart lay, there snaked a hideous-looking sword wound. Lo Binghei's ability to regenerate was, was surpassingly powerful. Even if his limbs were chopped off, he could flawlessly reattach them. If he went a bit more hardcore, he could even grow new ones without problem. Unless he purposefully chose not to heal an injury, there were no wounds he couldn't mend and none that couldn't leave a scar. Liu Chinge, Lo Binghei shouted, for Shizun's sake, I've let you live over and over again. But since you want to die so badly, you can't blame me. The force of his subsequent eruption of spiritual energy and murderous intent almost made Chen Ching Cho's internal organs shift inside of him. He knew Lo Binghe was furious, and he hurried to yell at Liu Chinge, hey, You still haven't left yet? It felt like ever since he'd come into this world. He kept playing the role of the selfless rear guard who'd sacrificed himself for others. Liu Chinge gave him a glance. Then was as decisive as expected. He left without delay, tucking the body beneath his arm and jumping onto his sword, then flying off at lightning speed. Lo Binghe wanted to take action, but abruptly a violent tremor shook his heart, and Jin Mo's sudden recoil forced him to be still for a beat. Due to this one missed beat, he could only watch helplessly as Liu Chinge flew off with Shin Ching Cho's corpse under his arm. He remained in place in a daze, a blankness flickering over his face for an instant. He'd forgotten to even return fire. He had the appearance of a child who'd had his entire world, his most beloved thing, snatched away from him, whose sky was about to collapse and fall. Chin Ching Cho had originally planned to take advantage of the chaos and slip away, but when he saw this, for some reason his feet remained stuck in place, and that unbearable flash from before grew even stronger. But even if he found the sight unbearable, it couldn't be helped. If he continued to let Lo Binghe embrace that corpse, who knew what gravely sinful and terrifying developments could have transpired? The real problem was that his heart had softened at such an inopportune time. 
He hadn't managed to slip away. Lo Binghe's head turned sharply in his direction, and those two severe red eyes locked on him. Within its sheath, Jin Mo began to tremble with both joy and malice. Lo Binghe's expression clearly told Shin Ching Cho that he would absolutely, positively hack him into a thousand pieces. Shin Ching Cho looked at his eyes that were both furious and devastated and backed up two steps. Then, all of a sudden, as if his mind had been bewitched, he wanted to tell Lo Binghe something true. He wanted to say, don't be so sad, Shizun isn't dead. Just as he moved his lips, a black shadow sprang up out of the group of Huan Hua Palace disciples. The silhouette was unbelievably fast and nimble. It snatched Shin Ching Cho up like a whirlwind and left just like that. Lo Binghe's eyesight and reflexes were exceptional, yet the spiritual blast he fired managed to miss. He stood in place, emotionlessly, emotionlessly looking at the ruins that remained of Huan Hua Palace Pavilion and at the troops strewn everywhere. The entire time, the Huan Hua Palace disciples had been unable to interfere. But they too knew that Lo Binghe's mental state was unstable after this series of losses. He would definitely explode in a rage, and they hurried to kneel in mass. It also happened that Sha Hualing had finally made it to the pavilion. She rushed to the front, but Lo Binghe sent her flying the moment she arrived, and she coughed up three liters of blood. She'd long known that Lo Binghe was temperamental, but not knowing what had enraged him this time, she said in a terror, Oh, my lord, come down! Uh, my lord, come down! The person you brought back is really quite something, said Lo Binghe. This quite, really quite something was so fearsome that it would have been less scary if Lo Binghe had told her to commit suicide on the spot. Sha Hualing's soul almost left her body. This uh, subordinate has something to report, she said hastily. The moment the break-in occurred, this subordinate detected the problem and went to deal with it. Liu Chinge wasn't the only intruder. The peak lord of Baizan Peak had scouted the palace's interior by cover of night, but he was unable to break the maze array. However, someone had broken the maze array beforehand, and using that, Liu Chinge was also successfully infiltrated. Lo Binghe gazed in the direction in which Liu Chinge had disappeared on his sword and slowly clenched his fists, the bones of his knuckles cracking. This is bonkers. And we still have one chapter left. Oh my god! Chapter 51. Sha Hualing figured that Lo Binghe genuinely didn't care who the other intruder was. He was, I hope it's, I hope it's Gong Yi Zhao, maybe. He was only concerned with Shin Ching Cho's body, which had been snatched away, so she hastily changed her tune. Liu Chinge can't get far carrying that, that, that by himself. This subordinate will take some forces and give chase. No need, said Lo Bing Hei. Sha Hualing shivered, her heart chilly, a vague premonition welling up within. And indeed, she heard Lo Bing Hei coldly say, I'll go myself, call Mobe here. Oh, bitch! Oh! Oh, snap. At this time, Shin Ching Cho finally came to understand exactly how gentle Lo Bing Hei had been while controlling the blood mites in his body. If Lo Bing Hei really wanted to kill someone with the heavenly demon blood, the pain would be in no way the only, only on the level of period cramps. He could make you wish you were dead, make it hurt until you couldn't stand straight, couldn't speak until you could only roll around the floor and afterwards you just lie there like a corpse, but the head to toe anguish wouldn't lessen even to the slightest bit. There was no way you could last until it dulled, or until you got used to it. Case in point, after his rampaging fury passed, Lo Binghe had finally remembered that he still had his heavenly demon blood. The person who dragged Shin Ching Cho off in the midst of the confusion had probably reached some place safe. As their pace slowed, and they began to walk while supporting him. Shin Ching Cho wanted to sit, not walk, but he no longer had the strength to speak. He was dragged along, half dead for a stretch, before that person finally realized something was wrong. They lowered Shin Ching Cho to the ground. The voice they spoke with was both gentle and refreshing, the words measured. They seemed to be a young man. What's wrong? the young man asked in a concerned tone. Were you injured just now? Shin Ching Cho moved his lips, but he still lacked the strength to speak a single word. At present, it was like millions of blood mites were carousing in his capillaries, biting and swelling, squirming and twisting, the sensation both disgusting and agonizing. 
This was teaching Shin Ching Cho that when Lo Bing had activated the blood mites in his body before, he'd had no malice at all and had basically been 120% tenderhearted, more or less just briefly teasing him. Shin Ching Cho rapidly ran through the various achievements and honors he'd earned under the system's coercion, and he honestly found it hilarious beyond belief. Exactly where had he gone wrong? How had his actions resulted in Lo Bing Hei's feelings of that for him? Shin Ching Cho searched himself and concluded that he'd been a staunch straight man from birth, and that all of heaven and earth could testify to this. There should have been no need to doubt Lo Bing Hei's orientation either, so exactly whose fault was this? No need to wonder. If a character was derailed, it was of course the author's fault. Everything could be blamed on airplane shooting towards the sky! Two dry laughs had just left Shin Jing Cho when there was another burst of excruciating pain, and he really did roll around on the ground a couple of times. It seemed that doing this could alleviate the agony a little. He hardly rolled anywhere when he was held in place by the person who'd taken him. The young man touched Shin Jing Cho's forehead, along with his cheeks. His beard had mostly fallen off, leaving it sparse and patchy, and the cold sweat was everywhere. That touch trailed downward until it was at Shin Ching Cho's chest and abdomen. For some reason, the places he touched felt a bit better. Shin Ching Cho sucked in a breath, and he couldn't help but say, Ah, my friend, wh wh where are you touching? Even a few hours ago, he genuinely wouldn't have cared where others, especially those of the same sex, had touched him. They could touch anywhere they liked. Please, go ahead. But ever since Lo Binghe had opened a series of gates to a new world for him, Shin Ching Cho's worldview, which had been set for the past 20-plus years, had suffered a heavy blow. From now on, he needed to look at this world with a new gaze and a more sensitive attitude, especially on the issue of befriending those of the same sex. The person made an ah sound and then quickly let go and apologize. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to. No, 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 said Shin Ching Cho. You can touch. Please continue. Thank you. It wasn't an illusion. When this person let go, Shin Ching Cho immediately began to hurt. It seemed like this guy really could pacify the heavenly demon blood. Shin Ching Cho turned his head. He couldn't see the young man's face clearly beneath the moonlight, but those features were more or less bright and refined. The eyes incredibly pellucid. They reflected Shin Ching Cho's silhouette and the crisp moonlight like dew water, the images overlapping within them. Is this the is this the snake man from the lake? Or is it Gong Yi Zhao? Shin Ching Cho looked at those eyes and faintly recalled something. But before he could give it careful thought, something exploded within his brain, the pain so great that he groaned, shoving his head downward he curled his fingers into a fist and furiously bashed to the ground. Suddenly Shin Ching Cho felt someone lift him by the back collar, his lower jaw throbbing as his mouth was forced open and a liquid poured in. His tongue was numb, and from the reaction of the acid in his stomach, he though he couldn't tell what the taste of the liquid that had, it was probably not anything delicious. Choking, he wanted to spit it out, but the young man covered his mouth. Those movements were forceful. His tone was incredibly tender. Swallow, he coaxed. Shin Ching Cho's throat bobbed violently, and in a moment of haste, he ended up swallowing the liquid anyway. Rivulets of the unknown liquid trickled down from the corner of his mouth. He lowered his head while coughing harshly, and the young man patted his back from the side, helping him breathe. The shocking thing was that after this liquid entered his mouth and stomach, the pain from the blood mites, which had tormented him the entire trip, swiftly vanished. Shin Ching Cho's body felt better, but the ground dropped out beneath his heart instead. He seized a fistful of the clothing at the young man's chest. What did you make me drink? The young man pried open Shin Ching Cho's fingers one by one, bringing them away from his chest and smiled. Does it still hurt? It didn't really hurt. It really didn't hurt. But the fact that it didn't hurt was what made it scary. He'd never imagined that something like heavenly demon blood could have an antidote. As the sense of taste gradually returned to his tongue, Shin Ching Cho felt the stench of blood within his mouth was also growing stronger, strong to the point that he felt nauseated. The original work had said very distinctly that all medicines were ineffective against heavenly demon blood. Only heavenly demon blood could keep heavenly demon blood in check. Fuck. Not only had he drunk it twice, he'd drunk heavenly demon blood from two different owners. Shin Ching Cho really could 
fucking live up to the eight words, unprecedented and unparalleled with none before or after. After thinking this, Shin Xingqiu let out a cheerful whoop and fell over face first. What? Oh my God. What is this vampire novel? What is this vampiric novel? What is happening? Oh, then it has to be the, the sun, moon. What? Has to be the demon that was in the lake, right? The sound of ripping flesh. What's more, it was accompanied by hoarse, wretched screams. Shin Xingqiu pressed his temples, and the scene before his eyes slowly clarified and focused. A sea of blood, a mountain of corpses. Lo Binghe stood, wooden in the midst of this purgatory of a scene. He wore black, so the blood couldn't mark his clothes. But half his face was splashed with specks of crimson, and he raised and lowered his sword callously and mechanically. To start, when Shin Qingqiu first laid eyes on Lo Binghe, an image automatically surfaced in his mind. That of Lo Binghe holding Shin Qingqiu's corpse as he rolled off a bed in a heap, so it was hard to look at him directly. The sound of ripping flesh. But he soon realized that Lo Binghe, Lo Binghe was massacring his own dream realm constructions. What difference was there between this and stirring his own brains with a knife? He's not an idiot who doesn't know better. Only a madman would do something like this. Though Shin Ching Cho often loved to say that Lo Binghe was a masochist who liked to torture himself, there was no way he could squeeze out a couple of dry laughs over this level of self-torture or even take the time to ridicule it. Lo Binghe lifted his eyes to Shin Ching Cho, his gaze heavy, his, like his mind was unclear. But as soon as those eyes reflected Shin Ching Cho's silhouette, they instantly brightened, and he promptly tossed aside the long sword in his hand. He threw it far, far away, and then hid his bloodstained hands behind him, calling in a quiet voice, Shizun. Then he remembered that his face was stained, too, and as if to remedy this, he wiped at the blood washed over his face with his sleeve, but the more he wiped, the dirtier it became. Like a child who'd been caught stealing red-handed, and he grew increasingly distressed. A stranger the first time, familiar the second. Shin Ching had experience, pretending to be the product of artificial intelligence, and he could still project an unperturbed image. He, invo he involuntarily softened his voice when he spoke. What are you doing? Shizun, I, I let you be taken from me again. Lo Bing Hei said quietly, this disciple is useless and couldn't even hold on to your body. This answer made Shin Ching expression and emotions became equally complicated. So this cruel murder of his own dream realm constructions just now should be considered self-discipline? Given how deft Lo Binghe's actions had been, Shin Ching Cho feared this wasn't the first time Lo Binghe had done this. No wonder Lo Binghe had been unable to distinguish the difference between a product of the dream realm and an intruder from the outside the last time they met. Shin Ching Cho sighed and deliberated for a while before he gently comforted him. What's lost is lost. I don't blame you. Lo Binghe stared at him vacantly. But that's all I have left now. Shin Xing Shou didn't dare look him in the eye. Could Lo Binghe really have spent those five years clinging to a corpse? To an empty shell of Shin Xing Shou he hadn't wanted anymore? Lo Binghe's voice abruptly chilled. After a while, you city, I swore that in this life I'd never let Shizun be taken from me again but I still let someone snatch you away. The bitterness, along with the dark red color within his eyes, was both turbulent and deep-set. The long sword that he tossed a side sword into the air on his command and pierced to the chest of several people who were on the ground in their death throes. Waves of wretched screaming filled his ears. Shin Xing Shou hastily restrained him. Oh, don't be reckless, he reprimanded. Even if you're dreaming, this is no different from self-harm. Don't tell me you've forgotten. Of course Lo Binghe wouldn't have forgotten. He stared straight at Shin Ching Cho, flipping his hand over and pressing it over the back of his old masters. Only after a long while did he say, I know that I'm dreaming. Only in a dream would Shizun still scold me like this. Upon hearing this line, Shin Ching Cho snapped back to his senses. He couldn't. This was wrong. He couldn't do this to Lo Binghe. If you didn't have that kind of intention towards someone, you shouldn't give them hope. The larger the hope, the larger the disappointment. His confused state of mind would only continue, and it would only increase the chance that he would lose all reason, even if this was a dream. 
he still couldn't drag his feet and pussy around like this. He had to be decisive. If he continued to indulge such ill-defined involvement, it would not become an evil deed. Shin Chingcho firmly yanked his hand back and corrected his expression, adopting that which was he was best at. An unapproachable countenance, austere and aloof. He then turned right around and left. Upon being shaken off, Lo Binghe was stunned for a moment, and he dashed after him. Shizun, I know I was wrong. If you know you're wrong, don't follow, Shin Chingcho said coldly. I've regretted it for a long while, but I was unable to tell you, Lo Binghe said anxiously. Are you still angry that I drove you to self-detonate your spiritual energy? I've already fully repaired the meridians in Shizun's body. I'm not lying either. As long as I can enter the holy mausoleum, I'll definitely find a way to awaken you again. Shin Chincho didn't answer, hesitating over whether he should drop some harsh words to make Lo Binghe give up on this idea. But then Lo Binghe suddenly threw himself forward and embraced him from behind. He hugged Shin Chincho firmly, not budging even an inch if Shin Chincho were to thrash and flail like a madman. Shin Chincho's entire body stiffened within the hug as if he had brushed up against some hairy thing and the fine hairs on his body stood up straight. He gathered energy into his hand, but he still didn't truly attack, instead spitting two words between gritted teeth. Beat it! It's supposed to be a guarantee that after blackening, Lo Binghe no longer goes down the route of misery. Take your hands off. Lo Binghe turned a deaf ear to his demand. Or Shizun angry about what happened in Jinlan City? Correct, said Shin Ching Cho. Lo Binghe still refused to let go. When I first returned from the Endless Abyss, I learned that Shizun had told everyone else that I was killed by demons, he mumbled. At first I thought it was because Shizun was kind-hearted that you still had some lingering sentiments and were unwilling to ruin my name. But after we met, I saw Shizun's attitude and became scared that I had been too optimistic. I thought that Shizun hadn't concealed the truth from me, but because he felt that having brought up a demon would ruin his reputation. He cut a pitiful figure while speaking, the sentences tumbling out one after the other, as if he was terrified that Shin Ching would brusquely interrupt and not let him continue. I really wasn't the one who arranged for the sewers. At the time, I was so angry I couldn't think. That's the only reason I let them shut Shizun in the water prison. I, I've known I was wrong for a long time now. There would probably never be a time where Lo Bing Hei in reality could ramble nonstop without caring for his image. In all likelihood, he would only dare prattle on like this within the dreams he created for himself. To push away, to push him away during the moment would be like giving a young maiden, one who'd finally worked up the courage to call and brokenheartedly weep to an older sister for comfort and encouragement, a face turning slap. It was really a bit cruel. Shin Ching was filled with both deep compassion as well as a feeling that this was extremely absurd. What could be more absurd than discovering that the person from whom you've exhaustedly plotted to flee and who had indeed fled from so many for so many years had actually wanted hadn't actually wanted to kill you at all, but wanted to do you instead. <laughs> Though whether the desire was to kill or to fuck, the result was the same. Shin Ching Cho would still run away with all of his might. One party wanted to meet but couldn't, and so had clung to a corpse for five years. The other party avoided the first like the plague, but still felt like he ran into him a great deal. Shin Ching Cho's hands were stiff as he raised and lowered them, clenched and relaxed, and in the end he let out a sigh anyway and patted that head above his. Fuck, I've really lost, he thought. Right now, forget about the harem. A perfectly fine, dark, and vicious stallion novel male lead was very possibly still a virgin. Lo Binghe had already put himself into such a state, so it would be rather inhumane of Shin Ching Cho to shove another knife in. In the end, Shin Ching Cho lost to a deeply tragic act Lo Binghe had sold him, as well as to his own sense of sympathy. Lo Binghe instantly clutched that hand of his. Shin Ching Cho felt that the skin on Lo Binghe's palm which was pressing into the back of his hand, was uneven. When he looked closer, he realized it was a sword scar. At first, Shin Ching Cho didn't understand why there were so many scars on Lo Bing Hei's body, but then he suddenly remembered. Mm -hmm. I was getting to this. During the night in Jinlan City, for a stretch, Lo Bing Hei played cat and mouse with him. When Shin Cho was caught, he had stabbed at Lo Bing Hei, and Lo Bing Hei had caught Zhu Ya's blade, point squarely in his hand. As for the wound on his chest and close to his heart, Shang, Shin Ching Cho had even less of an excuse for forgetting that. It was from the Immortal Alliance Conference. While forcing Lo Binghe to fall, Shin Ching Cho had accidentally stabbed him. 
It seemed like every time he tried to stab Lo Binghe, the latter was never avoiding the strike and had instead always received it head on, neither dodging, neither dodging nor evading, letting him back away. Because of this, Shin Chingto had stabbed him twice, despite not wishing to either time. Furthermore, after being pierced by his blade, Lo Binghe hadn't healed either wound and instead had purposefully preserved them. I was afraid of that! No! Oh my god! I was afraid it was about to do that! Oh, you're joking! No! No! We can't end it there! Son of a bitch! So... <laughs> scream at the top of my lungs but i don't feel like bursting your eardrums today so there we are <laughs> oh my god scum villain <laughs> scum villain self-saving system <gasps> so yeah uh-huh well um wh where do we start <laughs> do we start where do we start how you go I have to wait <laughs> but um i want to real quick get on um discord first of course my dog's gonna be like you're gonna have to come back around and give me the toy because i don't know where it is um but we're gonna go through the discord real quick reiki has posited the uh chapters 49 50 and 51 titles under spoiler tags so we're gonna see what those are and uh see what they were because as we've seen some of the sport uh, some of the chapter titles uh so far have been very spoilery so um, chapter 49 was called True Disposition, which was about <laughs> Shin Shing Show finally realizing some things. We're going to talk about it. Um, but yes, that. Um, chapter 50 was called Completely Shattered Worldviews. Oh, we're going to talk about that. That was a, a moment. And then chapter 51 is This Dream is Pitiful. We're going to talk about these too. There, there's quite a bit of, um... There is quite a bit of influence that I see, particularly from Odao Zushi, uh, from these chapters. But uh, you could argue from he for Heaven Official's Blessing as well, ish. But yeah, um, so we are going to be talking a little bit about Modao Zushi and Heaven Official Blessing spoilers. So sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to tag all of them. I'll try to. I I'll try to as I'm editing. But so we get one picture of this chapter set. We only have one set of chapters to go and we're done with volume two we're, we'll be halfway done with the series i'm i'm floored so uh the picture that we get for this chapter set's a really nice picture um ah! it's of shin ching cho getting kissed by lo bing in the dream here we are oh my god so so we just need to go through these chapters in order, right? I, I'll talk about this in a hot second. Don't you worry. Whiteboard Coon will be explained here uh, for a bit. But we, we should just also put on here about some things that we've come to realize about Shin Ching Cho and some things that we're realizing about Lo Bing Hei and then our uh, mystery demon over here, which we'll talk about when we get to it. <laughs> which I have theories that are probably wrong, but we'll talk about them. So yeah, so Shin Shin Cho, first starting out chapter 49, saying that he had always maintained a respectful distance when it came to fighting between the female leads. So Shin Shin Cho, when it comes to the women in the series, it was very, it kind of felt like sort of an asexual or just aesthetic appreciation. Right? It's very platonic. It was just like, oh yeah, these female characters, they're very, very beautiful. Which does not say anything about someone's sexuality. We'll talk about that, you know, somebody saying, oh, that woman's beautiful. I mean, I'm confident enough in my sexuality. I'm not attracted to women. But I would be like, oh my god, she's gorgeous. Or she has an amazing body or all this. Like, I'm, I'm confident enough to say that. And that's kind of how Shin Ching Cho is. He's just like, oh yeah, she's gorgeous. She's amazing. She's beautiful. She's so wonderful and strong and has a great personality. Like, you know... But there is a slight difference when he's focusing on the little minute details with like Lo Bing Hei talking about like the way his brow is placed and like the chiseledness and stuff. It the language that is used to describe Lo Bing Hei from Shin Ching Cho's perspective and describe every other female character is different. 
So it does lend us as the audience to kind of be like, oh, you may not realize that you're saying this, Shin Ching Cho, but you are talking about Lo Bing Hei in some pretty specific terms. And you've also talked about some of the other male characters in some pretty specific terms. So instead with men, as far as appearance, especially with Lo Bing Hei, there is a more fine tuned, um, fine tuned approach. We'll just put that, we'll just put that on there for now. Fine tuned approach. And he just seems more focused on it. Anyway, so poor, I think it's just really sad days at the Juan Hua Palace. Things are just kind of in shambles and it's sort of insane. You have the little palace mistress. It feels like Sha Hua Ling has taken the little palace mistress under her wing. She's like, oh yes, I'll cultivate you a little girl. And she's given up on Chin Wan Yu because Chin Wan Yu, like her advances have not been met at all. She is not getting Lo Bing Hei's attention whatsoever. And Sha Hua Ling, she can't really do much. And then little, the little palace mistress, I mean, Chin Ching Cho goes through a list and we have like X, 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 and we'll get to it. But everything is just so dour and sad here. Like nobody is getting on Lo Bing Hei's good side. We'll talk about Lo Bing Hei, but nobody's getting on his good side. And so, in any case, little palace mistress, I, I say that Shaw Walling takes her under her wing. She actually is also making fun of her, which maybe that's the more appropriate way to say it because little palace mistress is not about Shaw Walling at all. So then Shin Ching Cho discovers a shocking truth. He counts on his fingers. He comes to this shocking conclusion of the OG. We learn a little bit about the OG from get this right a little bit about the og from this chapter set we find out that in the original um we start out with sha hua ling she's not a wife so we have sha hua ling she is not a wife but a subordinate in the new version And she's just underpaid and overworked. <laughs> so things aren't good. We've got to save her, right? We've got to, we've got to help um, get her into a better working position. Then we have Liu Mingyan. So Liu Mingyan, we find out with, and I'm sure by now everybody's commented on it and I would not have noticed, but Liu Mingyan, the love tassel was supposed to be a token to Lo Binghei and that did not happen. So the love token didn't even end up happening. So that's that's out. So nope, not her. Then there's Ning Ying Ying, who we have found out she has overcome. She's no longer a love martyr, but a upstanding young woman. Soon she'll get ideas and start thinking. <laughs> so she's an upstanding young woman. She's basically been cured. Her lovesick brain was cured. Then there is the little palace mistress, or I guess she's little Miss Piggy, however you want to do. Um, she is little Miss Piggy. Oh my God. Because Shaw Holling calls her a little pig. She is little Miss Piggy. Every time, I didn't want to say this last chapter set because I was like, I was like, is that reference on point? Is that fair? But every time I've seen her since the moment she came on screen in my head, she's always kind of looked like little Miss Piggy. And I couldn't bring myself to say it because I was like, I don't know. But Sha Hua Ling makes the comparison of her to a pig in this chapter set. So it's there. Little Miss Palace Mistress, little Miss Piggy. She's a locked up woman basically a locked up woman and she is treated like a pig she's little miss piggy um then we have chin wan yu who is probably the most depressing that she is a bitter locked up woman the sequel she's just um she is just little miss palace mistress's nanny at this point and then we have chu hai tang who's just wandering, who's just wandering the streets. Instead of getting on Lo Bing Hei's good side, she's just wandering the streets. And then the three nuns just made, we'll put them over here, the three nuns are just appearance only. So 
it's like at first Shin Ching Cho's like, wow, man, Lo Bing Hei, no wonder he's in a rough state. None of his wives are working out. And I'm like, oh my God. So I'm so glad. I'm so glad that Shin Ching Cho at least crossed one hurdle in this chapter set. Finally, it took us nearly two volumes to get through. I honestly thought it would take us longer, but MXTX decided to throw us a bone. <laughs> Some literal bones. And um uh, and go from there. So yes. And so of course. The system is just like rewarding all of these points. And again, one of our goals from the beginning was to fix the landmines of the story, was to fix Sha Shang Qinghua's writing. So we've been doing that. We've helped make Ning Ying Ying a better character, Ming Fan a better, better character, Liu Ming Yan a better, better character. We've helped all these other characters. And I have a feeling that I don't know about the little palace mistress. I don't know about her. But I feel like Sha Hua Ling might get some help from Shin Ching Cho. Maybe. She seems like she's going to be pretty active in this story, so I feel like he could help her a lot. Whereas um, the little palace mistress is probably going to be just relegated to Quan Hua Palace. Right? So yeah, all these cannon fodder characters have been able to get more IQs and better points in the story. And so then what Shin Ching Cho can't figure out is he's like, well, Liu Binghei is still a virgin and hasn't slept with anybody yet, so... Why is this points going up? <laughs> it's like <laughs> we find out in this. We find out in this. Um, at first, Shin Ching Cho thinks that he's asexual, but we find out in this chapter set that is not the case. It's like, oh, Shin Ching Cho, you might be demisexual. I honestly think that, you know, is he demisexual? Most of MXTX's leads are. I feel like you know we've, we're establishing that Lo Bing Hei is gay. But, but he could also be kind of demisexual because he only seems interested in Shizun. Um, meanwhile, meanwhile, um, Shin Ching Cho, Shin Ching Cho is either to me asexual or demisexual is what I feel. He, you know, he thinks that he is heterosexual. That's what he's always thought. But all of his actions suggest otherwise. If he was heterosexual, I feel he would at least have, you know, some lingering gazes with the female characters or would be trying to interact with them, but he don't give a shit about them. So I'm like, I don't know, Shin Ching Cho. I think that you're pretty much just trying to convince yourself that you're heterosexual, but that's not the case. I personally think he's demisexual and just is going to take forever to figure out that he likes Lo Bing Hei, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm glad the system is back up to date enough to acknowledge and tell Shin Ching Cho when he's entered the dream realm. It happens twice in this chapter set. He enters the dream realm twice. And apparently Lo Bing Hei has had a lot of time to perfect how he does the dream sequences. So his dream, basically he dreams a lot is what that tells me. He has entered the dream world a lot trying to relive his moments with Shin Ching Cho because he's freaking heartbroken. I did feel bad for Lo Bing Hei in this chapter set. I did to a big extent because he finally gets to tell Shin Ching Cho what's going on and he finally bears his soul. And I do feel really bad for him and it's really sad. And I want to like shake Shin Ching Cho by the shoulders <laughs> very hard at this chapter set because I'm like, you know now, you don't have an excuse, sir. You know. So he does dream a lot, and he just wants Shin Ching Cho back. Now, that does bear the question of where the hell Meng Mo went. Where he be? Where Meng Mo? He just kind of disappeared, right? He disappeared from the plot. He just, he was there. He was training Lo Bing Hei. He was supposedly following him around, training him up through the abyss, and now he's gone. So where the hell is he? We know Jin Mo is there, but where's Meng Mo? So we haven't seen him forever, so... Maybe since Mobe June is coming back into the storyline, we'll get some of that too. I don't know. But anyway. Anyway. So Shin Ching Cho, of course, is himself or is the original Shin Ching Cho that he's been playing in the dream. And that whole dream sequence, just the idea of Lo Bing Hei sitting by bamboo and watching him, there was something so sexual about this dream when you know what it is. And it's like, oh no. It's like Lo Bing Hei has been having these dreams about Shin Ching Cho and trying to get to where he can interact with him all this time. 
And there, there is something, the moment Lo Binghei is like leaning up against the bamboo, just looking at Shin Ching Cho, just looking him up and down. I was like, I felt like clutching my pearls and like blushing, like, oh my God. Cause he, he's just basically like, just like looking him up and down and it's a dream. So he's just fantasizing about him and Shin Ching Cho's like, what's going on? I'm like, ah, so of course, Shin Ching Cho questions why this memory of him running laps would be something that he's like, why would Lo Bing Hei even want to have this vision again? Why would he want to dream this? And the answer is because it's like, it's just a moment where they interacted and it's what Lo Bing Hei remembers. And he misses him so badly over the last five years. And at this point, you can kind of think of it this way. He's been dreaming about Shin Ching Cho and reminiscing all their moments together for five years. So by this point, he's kind of grasping straws at whatever memories are left. And it just happens to be this random one. And it's like, oh my God, this is kind of insane, right? And so he's like, they watched him walk away. And then he sees Lo Binghe and he's like, what do I do? And of course, Lo Binghe thinks he's just dreaming and he can't interact with them. And then he's like, why won't you speak to me? And then Shin Ching Cho does reply, which is not what Lo, Bing Lo Binghe was expecting. And that leads them to have this conversation. And Shin Ching Cho, you know, and I, I do like that Shin Ching Cho is like kind of torn. He's like, what do I do? He's like, I don't want to just, he's like, I want to help. But then he's like, I don't want to stir the pot, but it's too late. I'm already stirring the pot. So what do I do? And it's just, he talks in this one paragraph on page 190 of the digital version that he pats the top of Lo Bing Hei's head. And when he explains this part, it suddenly comes back and I'm like, oh, so when he talks about the head pats, he said that it's something that he always, he always is inclined to do. It's just a gesture that he likes doing, but it always seemed kind of weird to do that. Like he, he says there, he's like, um, he's like, he'd perform this action countless times. The saying went, it was forbidden to touch men's heads and women's waists, but the more something was forbidden, the more he felt the urge to do it. We'll talk about that in a hot second. But he loved patting people's heads, but as a grown adult, you couldn't indulge in this sort of rude impulse, no matter how much he wanted to touch them. And so he was able to do it with Lo Bing Hei and just didn't think anything of it. So on the one hand, on the one hand, it seems like Shin Ching Cho just like patting people's heads. He's like, I just like the head patting. It's considered rude to do it, but Lo Bing Hei let me do it. And so I just kept doing it with that, without impulse, not realizing that it was, you know, inappropriate after a certain time, or he didn't realize it might lead Lo Bing Hei to think something that wasn't necessarily true. So that does lend a little bit of credit to Shin Ching Cho back in the day when we, the audience, were like, but you're giving them these head pats. You're doing all this. Like, well, why are you doing that? Well... Shin Ching Cho just likes giving head pats and he didn't really mean anything by it. It was just misunderstood, but it's very easy to misunderstand something like that. So it's just like, you want to shake him. But the other thing was the idea that they said here, the more something, the more it was forbidden, the more he wanted to do it. When that was said, it immediately made me think about his sexuality, like talking about the more something's forbidden, like, oh, it's forbidden. You're a guy is not supposed to like a guy in this world. The more Shin Ching Cho wanted to do it, meaning that it is possibly a sign of his sexuality. He just is equating it to head pats and not realizing it. I don't know. Because the original Shin Ching Cho was grabbing at women. And that's not what this Shin Ching Cho does. He has the head pats with Lo Bing Hei instead. And doesn't he do a head pat to like Yang or Liu Chingay? Didn't that happen too at one point? Just absentmindedly or Gong Yi Zhao or something? I, I can't believe this series is leading me to believe that Gong Yi Zhao is dead. And I'm still in denial. I'm still in stark denial that he's dead. I just can't believe it. I, if he pops up as a surprise alive character I'll be so excited but I'm still trying to rationalize in my brain that he's gone I'm like okay <laughs> so that's when Lo Binghei starts to get too close and Shin Ching Cho's like oh this is getting a little maybe sexual I don't know how to feel about this and he does say that he's been kissed before 
Um, he was kissed before, at least in the real world, once, but not like this. And not by Lo Bing Hay. And I don't blame Lo Bing Hay in this dream for being this way, because it's a dream. If you're having a dream and you don't realize this is the real thing, of course you would be all like, like, what are you doing, Shin Ching Cho? And the fact that he gets mad at him in his dream, he's like, why are you pushing me away? Or it, it just, Shin, Lo Bing Hay believes that Shin Ching Cho in the dream pushing him away is just his subconscious, like, getting on to him or, like, more self-loathing. And it's like, no, that's not it at all. And it's just... But yeah, so the system's excited. Like, there, he has 1,400 satisfaction points at this point. I'm not keeping track of satisfaction points. Y'all can do that in the comments because last time I did that, they suddenly were all deleted. And I felt like I wasted my time. But there's about 1,400 points right now. Yep. I like that the system is just kind of tongue-in-cheek being a smartass where it's like, dun, 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 dun. 500 satisfaction points congrats 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 important things must be said three times <laughs> it's like you bitch <laughs> Shin Shin Cho's like I hate you this is what you're doing really and so Shin Shin Cho is taking the place of all of these wives in chapter 50 and he's trying to wake Lo Bing Hei up and it's not working and Shin Shin Cho is like I was completely wrong all of these people, these gossipers, the people in the last set of chapters spreading rumors, they were all telling the truth. He's like, oh my God, I'd raise the male lead to be gay. Now here's the thing. As far as we know, Lo Bing Hei's been gay the entire time. OG version and this version. It's just that he didn't have someone like Shazoon to kind of awaken that side of him. And so instead he tried to overcompensate with all of these harem wives but it didn't work out. But the th and it was just a hot mess. But Shin Ching Cho also establishes the idea that what this is is his sexuality is also determined by airplane shooting towards the sky, and that Lo Bing Hei, his sexuality is essentially a written trait by uh, Shang Qinghua, who is notably absent from this book. I do not think I don't notice he's absent from this book. He has, he has disappeared into the nether sphere. And I was like, I was like, you've disappeared. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Maybe Mo Bai Jun showing up will root him out of whatever corner he's hiding in. I don't know. But I personally, my personal belief is that Shang Qinghua is gay and has just been hiding it through this stallion novel, but now all the threads are unraveling and all the stuff is getting revealed. And Shang Qinghua maybe is trying to not want that to be revealed. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. As It's kind of like the fog of misunderstanding. Shang Qinghua and the fog of misunderstanding, they're mentioned and you, you know they're there and then you forget about them and you're like, wait, were they important in this story? What happened to them? I'm sure we'll go back to them eventually. But yeah, so Liu Chinge shows up. Like, Lo Bing Hei is making out with Shin Ching Cho. Shin Ching Cho's like, oh my God, I don't know how to feel about this. Uh, uh, uh. And here's the crazy thing. Like, with the other two MXTX stories, whenever some of the intimacy happens, I'm going to try not to spoil this. Whenever some of the intimacy happens, we, the audience, know that the characters are down for it. They're just kind of being like, oh, but you know, I've been thinking about it, but I don't know. But they're down for it. Shin Shin Ching Show is a bit different. Shin Ching Show is like, I don't know what to do. I need my space. And what's so interesting is like Lo Bing Hei is down to clown. <laughs> he is down, down to clown, down to go. And we're gonna talk about some other things he's down for um here in a hot second. But he he's all in. All in. But Shin Ching Show is the one that needs to figure out what does he think about this? Like, like what, what does he think about this? What does this mean? Where is the stuff that Huck wants me to throw? I don't even know. Anyway. So I, and then the whole moment that Lo Bing Hei yells, get out. It reminded me of the beast where he's like, get out. Like it just, again, beauty and the beast moment. That comparison's great. So Liu Chinge bursts in with the help of another being that grabs Chin Ching Cho and runs away after that whole battle. Mystery person. At first I thought it was Gong Yi Zhao. And that was just me hoping that he was alive. 
But then I was like, well, Shin Ching would probably know that it's him by the sound of his voice. The only other explanation, and it can't be Yang uh, Yijan because he'd recognize him too. He just ran into him in the woods earlier. So at first I was like, is this like, was someone else transmigrated into Gong Yijiao or another character? How does that work? Or my theory is it is the sun moon mushroom demon that uh, it's a sun moon mushroom demon that Shen Qingcho left the shroom with and they have given themselves a new body and that's what it is i think that they're that demon and they've fallen in love and they've fallen in love with shin ching cho i again the harem is growing right uh and i don't ship liu chinge with uh, with Shin Ching Cho, but he definitely cares about him. And it makes sense now why whenever he sees uh, Lo Bing Hei with Shin Ching Cho's corpse, that Liu Ching is like, you bastard. What the fuck are you doing? So let's talk about that because part 11 is called Corpse. <laughs> so the whole original goal was that Shin Ching Cho wanted to rescue wanted to rescue his old corpse to give to Liu Chinge so they could have a proper burial which of course is important because we need this proper burial to happen so that Shin Ching Cho doesn't use that body to bring back the old Shin Ching Cho or something crazy to happen we don't need that so it's important we go bury that body and it's respectful, and plus, Shin Ching Cho, who's not comfortable right now with this sexual activity with Lo Bing Hei, probably doesn't want his former body to be violated by it. So, you know. Eh. And then, you know, Lo Bing Hei, of course, is trying to keep the corpse. It's just, I never thought when I picked up this story, I never thought. <laughs> A lot of things, but the la if you told me that on my bingo card was supposed to be the main protagonist's love interest it lying in bed for five years with his lover's shell corpse, I, I wouldn't have been getting a bingo. <laughs> I was floored. I was like, that's some necrophilia. We got some, we got some necromancy going on here. Lo Bing Hei is a demon. I mean, I we shouldn't be surprised, but I'm like, MXTX, you're getting kind of kinky with this. I was like, oh, okay. It was like this weird, because you have um, in Modao Zushi, you know, the concept of sleeping with your lover. And in Heaven Official's Blessing, there's lots of, you know, like, like worshiping and, and being, I feel like Modao Zushi has the kinkery and Heaven Official's Blessing has like the utter devotion. And Scumville and Self Saving System is like, what if we combined the kinkery and utter devotion? <laughs> and then just had this instead. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I can find why Shin Ching Cho was a little bit disturbed because he's like, I don't consent to my body being, you know, slept in bed with you, but okay. And just the idea, just, uh, I don't know how the Dong Wall would do this. Because you have Lo Bing Hei getting out of bed, disheveled with just his PJs on, holding a half-naked that becomes naked corpse of Shin Ching Cho. I don't know how they'd pull that off. There'd be a lot more clothes, I guarantee. <laughs> Trust and believe. The thing about it, too, was I don't know if this was real, but whenever Liu Chinge like, stumbles into to get the corpse, it makes sense why it's so cold in that room because it has to be cold to keep the corpse cold so they doesn't decompose. I also think that there's some magic going on and the power of love. Also, if Lo Bing Hei has been doing anything sexual with that corpse, could those, I'm going to say this as correct as I can, could those fluids <laughs> have properties like the demon blood that could help keep corpses preserved? And was when Lo when Liu Chinge went to Lo Bing Hei's chambers and saw him with the corpse, Lo Bing Hei was dreaming and making out with Shin Ching Cho. Was Lo Bing Hei 
did he like 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 burst out of the the bed with the body in his arm and a massive erection like what what i just there the imagery that i got in that moment i was like oh this isn't right <laughs> i felt dirty i felt dirty shin ching shows like this is and the words of shin ching show this is too hardcore way too fucking hardcore <laughs> He's like, I would he's like, I could not have imagined this hardcore kink play. Holding his corpse in his arms. Even if it was something as innocent as him sleeping with the corpse and that's it. Still, it's a little bit. I was expecting, I was expecting Lo Binghei to have Shin Ching Cho's corpse like Snow White. Like in the little, the little coffin, the glass coffin where he could go up and like, and like peer into the coffin and say sweet nothing to Shin Ching Cho. Not that he was in bed chambers with it. That's for damn sure. So I'm like, I'm like, Shin Ching Cho, you need to help Lo Bing Hei by giving him a real body <laughs> to, to, to snuggle next to, not a corpse. Now he doesn't have anything. Isn't that sad? Now he doesn't have anything to snuggle next to. It's not good. Anyway, so they have this battle in the dark to try and claim this body back. Now, the whole time this battle is happening, Shin Ching Cho is pouring spiritual energy into Liu Chingay to try to give him the upper hand to win the battle against Lo Binghei. And that all makes sense. And I wonder if Shin, if Liu Chingay is going to like try to connect the dots and be like, wait, who was this? Was that how, but how could it be? I wonder what he's going to think about that when he goes off with the body, right? Luckily the body hasn't decayed, which is great. And Lo Binghei has tried to keep it intact so he can possibly use the mausoleum somehow to bring it back to life, right? Uh, what's also insane is that Lo Binghei, he still does not know that Shin Ching Cho is in a new body. He doesn't know, but he still, he was controlling him with the mites. Until this guy came along and um, nixed it. And nixed the powers or made them on the even playing field. I don't like the idea that Shin Ching Cho is drinking all of this blood. It's like a damn vampire novel. He's now drinking the blood. We hope it's blood. God, we hope it's blood. Of <laughs> something else. I think it is. He said he tasted blood in his mouth. Of um, this other demon who's now controlling him. I'm like, I'm like, is, what is Lo Bing Hei going to do when he finds out about this other one? What are we going to do? I also wondered if Lo Bing Hei, uh, this isn't possible. So I'm just going to throw this theory out because I thought of it, but I don't think it's possible. But I thought, what happens if, like, if Lo Bing Hei transmigrated into this being here? But he's not. He's in flesh and blood here. So I don't know who this mystery demon is. We're going to probably find out. But I'm like, interesting, right? So yeah. So he gets, he gets the body back. And then Shin Ching Cho finds two swords. He sees the sword uh, Zheng Yang and he sees Zhu Ya. Who were supposed to be broken swords, but they've been pulled back together. So he's like, there they lay. And he saw these two swords and he looked towards Lo Binghei and then he sees the, the, the sword wound. And he's like, Lo Binghei can heal himself and regenerate his arms and limbs. But we find out that Lo Binghei, he kept any wound caused by Shin Ching Cho. Any wound that was there, he kept those. So it's like, oh. It's like a sign of, it's a sign of his love that... He's going to keep these wounds with him. He'll heal the rest, but the battle scars that he has from his love, he's going to keep those. And he's like, for Shizun's sake, I've let you live, but don't blame me if I come to kill you. And it's like, ah. So yeah, he let Liu Chinge live because he knew that, that Shin Ching would be mad if he killed him, but now he's taking his body and it's like, ugh. And so, and he's pissed at Shin Ching Cho. So I'm, I'm guessing Shin Ching Cho took the swords. I don't know if he took the swords. Did he take Zhu Ya? Do you take Zhuya or the other one? Do you take them? They don't really say what happens to the swords in that moment. They just mention them, but they don't they don't say 
the phrase, Shin Ching Cho picked up the swords and left. They don't say that at all. So I'm like, did he take the swords or not? I guess we'll find out. But it's possible that they're still with Lo Bing Hei. So then Jin Mo, of course, wants to cause a havoc and cause a muck. And Lo Bing Hei is trying to keep him in check. And Shin Ching Cho wants to say something to Lo Bing Hei. He wants to say, don't be sad, Shizun isn't dead. But before he can say that, this black shadow springs out and grabs him and runs away with him. And it's not Sha Waling because she gets yelled at later on being like, oh, you know, I have something to report. And he's like, Liu Chingay successfully infiltrated using the help from someone else that broke the, ma the maze array. And Lo Binghei is trying to figure out like, who was it that helped him? How does this work? And he's like, get Mo Bei Jun over here. We're going to go, I guess we're going to go to Sangjong Mountain. So Mo Bei Jun is going to join him, which is like, ah. So Mo Bei Jun is going to join Lo Binghei and Sha Hualing. And they're probably going to go to the Kangjong Mountain sect to go after the corpse. So maybe Shang Qinghua will show up if Mo Bei Jun is involved. <laughs> But we don't know whoever this was. They helped. They helped uh, Liu Chinge. We don't know how. Now they may, Liu Chinge may have showed up, and the shadow demon person offered to help him. So that may have been it, right? The person that that seems very, very kind and tender. I don't know how to feel about them because they seem very tender and sweet. They seem very much that. But they also prevented Shin Ching Cho from getting with Lo Bing Hei. So I don't know. The, I don't, they prevented, I don't know if they are the system incarnate. I don't know. I don't think so. I think the systems are just their own entities. But I don't understand what their point is unless they are literally meant to be a hurdle. But I don't know, unless they've fallen in love with Shin Ching Cho and now they're going to be a love rival for Lo Bing Hei, as if we needed any more confusion in this story. I don't know. And we don't get to know anything about them. Shin Ching Cho, he can't see through the moonlight to see who the young man is. And the young man asks concerned, asking if he was, you know, injured. And that's when Shin Ching Cho starts talking about the blood mites. The blood mites still, I know I've said it over and over again, they still creep me out to a big extent. And I know that Shin Ching Cho's like, oh, well, compared to how I feel now about the blood mites, it's very clear that Lo Bing Hei was just taking it easy on me back then. But still, even if he was taking it easy on him back then, it's still using blood mites to manipulate your body. It's still freaking creepy. <laughs> so that's when Shin Ching Cho is like, where had I gone wrong? How did my actions result and Lo Bing Hei feeling sexual relations towards him. And Shin Ching Cho searched himself and concluded he'd been a staunch straight man from birth, and all of heaven and earth could testify this. There should have been no need to doubt. Okay. And I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Shin Ching Cho the benefit of the doubt. He says that he's heterosexual. The, the arrows aren't exactly pointing in that direction, but if that's what you want to go with, sure. Who are we to judge? Who are we to judge? We'll just go with that. Sure. But he's like, well, then why was Lo Bing Hei like that? And he's like, well, it's like if the character was derailed, it's clearly the old author's fault. Everything's blamed on airplane shooting towards the sky. And I like that Shin Ching Cho gets a laugh out of that. He's like, it's his fault. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, no. You just, damn it. So he's rolling around, but whenever the, the young man, young man, question quotation marks um trails downward and touches him every time everywhere he touches it's like the it just basically heals as he goes and the part that's kind of weird about this is that where he touches it feels better but he's like touching his chest and abdomen and like running his hand down here and shin ching cho's like um th that's cool that you're touching me but um uh you're saving me, but what are you doing? That part's really weird to me because it's like he wants to be competition for Lo Bing Hei, but to what avail? To what effect? What is going on? 
something's up, y'all. Something's up. Something's rotten in the state of Denmark, and we don't know what it is. And so Shin Ching Cho says that even a few hours ago, he normally wouldn't have cared where others, especially those of the same sex, touched him. Which, when he said especially those of the same sex, I'm like, he's like, I'm not saying that I'm possibly homosexual, but, <laughs> you know, one of those moments. But it's basically the idea that Lo Binghei, since he's expressed his worldview, and that's kind of shattered Shin Ching Cho's, and suddenly, knowing that Lo Binghei likes him and that it's sexual, and he feels this way, now it's making... Shin Ching Cho kind of retrospectively look at himself and he's like, what am I? What, what, I mean, I guess I need to be more sensitive and go about this in a new way. And it's like, until he figures it out. But he tells the person that they can touch him. And this person pacified the demon blood. He couldn't see the young man's face clearly, but the features were more or less bright and refined. The eyes pellucid. They reflected a silhouette. And the crisp moonlight, like dew water. So I'm like, when they said dew water, I'm like, is this the snake man? Did he be, did he use the mushroom to like craft a new body based off of Shin Ching Cho? And here's where we are. I swear, if that body looks like Shin Ching Cho, it's going to be insane. I don't know. I, I don't even know. What are we going to do? Or what if he crafted it out of Lo Bing Hei and the body looks kind of like Lo Bing Hei? This could all get very confusing very quickly. <laughs> I'm scared, y'all. I don't even know what to do. So that's when he, like, starts to get this liquid poured down his throat. And he doesn't exactly know what it is at first, but it's basically blood. And it's blood controlling blood. And he's like, the only antidote is heaven demon, heavenly demon blood could keep heavenly demon blood. And he's like, shit, I drank it from two different owners. He's like, now my body potentially is going to be controlled by two people. This is a problem. And then he just falls over face first. He's like, he could live up to unprecedented, unparalleled with none before or after. It's like Lady Gaga, amazing, brilliant, never seen before, genius. And that's how Shin Ching Cho feels right now. So yeah, so then he falls over and has another dream. And... The thing about it is, he's having this dream about Lo Binghei. So, presumably, he's back in Lo Binghei's dream realm. But, how does that work? Because, it's like, wouldn't he know? Wouldn't the system tell him if he's in Lo Binghei's dream? And wouldn't he near, be, need to be near Lo Binghei to be in the array for his dream realm? So, how does that work? But, anyway... I'm assuming maybe we'll find out as we go through. But let's just presume this is Lo Bing Hei's dream realm. And so he basically just sees this sea of blood and mountain of corpses and Lo Bing Hei just hacking away at these bodies. And Shin Ching Cho is like, hey, this is kind of like a form of self-harm. Like, you're mad. I understand that the corpse is gone. You're upset. But you're upset about all this. But why are you hacking away at this body? Like... You know, you're hurting yourself, so you need to stop doing that. And I like that as this conversation goes on, Shin Ching Cho is kind of like, he starts to feel for Lo Bing Hei and starts to kind of understand him and figure out what's been going on in his brain. And he's like, oh, shit. He's like, I can't just... He's like, I can't let you keep doing this. And so he tries to be cold and just stop it. But he doesn't know exactly what to do because Shin Ching Cho, he's like, I haven't acknowledged these feelings I have for you, so I don't want to mislead you, but I don't exactly know what to do. And so he tries to, like, walk him through it. And then, and at this point, at this point, Shin Ching Cho, you know everything. Lo Binghe knows everything from Ning Ying Ying and Ming Fan. They've explain, explained that. You know everything now. From Lo Bing Hei. It's all been put on the table. So there, there should be no misunderstanding as far as that is concerned. You all should know what you're doing. And he's like, don't tell me you're trying to hurt yourself. Don't tell me you've forgotten about that. And he's like, I know I'm dreaming. And only in a dream would you scold me like this. And he's like, he couldn't. This was wrong. He couldn't do this to Lo Bing Hei. If you didn't have that kind of intention to sort someone, you shouldn't give them hope. The larger the hope, the larger the disappointment. So, Shin Ching Cho at this point, he knows that Lo Bing Hei 
likes him and he doesn't want to lead him on. And I respect that. I respect that Shin Chu doesn't want to lead him on and believe, make him believe something that, that Shin Chu doesn't believe himself. It's just going to be very frustrating when he goes through all the trouble to make Lo Bing Hei not think that he likes him and then he realizes that he likes him because we all know what's going there. And I was like, oh! I'm like, Shin Chu, I respect you. I get what you're doing. But in about a volume or how many chapters are in that volume, you're going to be regretting these decisions. MXTX, this is the perpetual, like, face of reading an MXTX book. <laughs> so, at that point, Chin Ching Cho gets hugged by Lo Bing Hei, and he tries to brush him off. And then Lo Bing Hei confesses everything. And Chin Ching Cho lets him confess because he thinks that would be cruel to not let him confess everything and, and tell him what all is going on. And so, now... And the thing about it is, at the very end, he's like, I know I've lost, because at the very end, he still pats his head when he's done. He's like, damn it. He's like, I let him, I did it. I, uh, he's like, I, I, I really lost this battle. I still went through. And so, he comes to the conclusion Lo Bing Hei is still a virgin. And Shin Ching shows like, he's like, I can't, he's like, what do we do? He's like, I feel bad for him. And Lo Binghe clutches his hand, and that's when Shin Ching Cho notices the scars. The scars from his hand, from where he grabbed the sword, the stab wound. He's like, he could have healed all of those injuries, but the ones that were caused by Shin Ching Cho, he left. It's like, ah, oh, damn. Mm hmm. So that's where the chapter ends off at with. Shin Ching Cho realizing what's going on. So, I bought these party poppers. <laughs> I bought these party poppers, and you may be wondering what these goals up here. I decided that there are, you know, you know, there's that, that movie How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Well, this is how Shin Ching Cho will be the, the scum villain self-saving system, how it will save Shin Ching Cho in five easy steps. These are the five steps and goals that the system has, hopefully, to save Shin Ching Cho. Um, the first step is that Shin Ching Cho needs to realize that Liu Bing Hei is gay. So, oh no, did this not work? <laughs> that was the most failed attempt at a party popper that has ever been party popped. The saddest party popper in the history of party poppers. <laughs> pitiful that was bad we're gonna we're gonna try again next time but step one <laughs> he has to realize he's gay check <laughs> so step one has been realized shin ching has realized that lo bing is gay congrats good uh step two is that shin ching needs to realize that the story can change. That has been one of his biggest hurdles, even though he's had plenty of evidence put forth in front of him to show him that the story very much can and is changing. He still thinks that things are going to end up the way that they are. And I feel like these last couple chapters, he started to have a turning point. He started to be like, yeah, I think that the story can change. I didn't realize Lo Bing Hei was different than he was in the novel, but now I'm getting that impression that he was. So, hmm... Okay, so maybe that's step two. So maybe next week we'll get step two out of the way. You know, being halfway through the series, it would be nice to have step one and two out of the way. Sure, he's realized he's gay. He realized the story can change. That opens up a lot of things for us for the next two volumes. Yay. Step three. Shin Ching Cho needs to realize that he needs to save Lo Bing Hei. Yes, unlike the first novel... Or the original novel where he was constantly worried about being killed by Lo Bing Hei. Now, Shin Ching Cho needs to realize that he kind of needs to save Lo Bing Hei. Because Lo Bing Hei 
is in a really bad place. He is heartbroken. He is in despair. He thinks that Shin Ching Cho is dead. He also thinks that Shin Ching Cho didn't love him. He thinks that he's a failure. He thinks that he's he's just he's just wallowing in depression and despair, and everyone around him is drowning with him. Like whether it's uh, Chin Wan Yu or Sha Hua Ling or the Palace Mistress, everyone else is suffering alongside Lo Bing Hei, and so Shin Ching Cho needs to become the hero of the story, the protagonist, and save the day, right? So that needs to happen. Uh, four, Shin Ching Cho needs to realize that he likes Lo Bing Hei. He may realize he's demisexual or that he might just like this one man or he might be pansexual. He might be heterosexual or he might be homosexual. He needs to realize, regardless of his sexual orientation, that he likes Lo Bing Hei. He just needs to realize that. He needs to come to terms with that. That needs to happen. And then finally, for them to have a happily ever after, Shin Ching Cho and Lo Bing Hei have to mutually like each other and communicate about it. That's the end goal. That's what we're working towards. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's what we're working towards. That's the end goal of it all. So, yeah. And I feel like Shin Ching Cho made a lot of progress in this chapter set. This was good for him. This was a lot of progress. I was proud of him. But we have quite a ways to go. And we have one chapter set left of this volume before we dive into volume three. So there's that. <laughs> Oh, this chapter was like such a big weight off my shoulder in terms of Shin Ching Cho finally realizing some things. But then we have this mysterious character show up who I don't even know who he is. So the fudge. But we're going to figure out next week, I guess, who he is. Maybe, possibly, we hope. In any case, um, I'm curious to hear your thoughts down below. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care. And yes, next week, we'll be looking at chapters 52, 53, and 54 of Heaven of... <laughs> this week was off the rails. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Stay safe, take care. I'll be back next week. <laughs> with the last chapter set of volume two of Scum Villain's Self-Saving System. <laughs> Ciao!